Welcome to the Happy Camper, coming to you from the beautiful mountains of southwest Montana. Our greeter Macy is here in the foreground, and today we are going to show you the 2019 Aspen Trail 1700 BH Mini Travel Trailer. As you can see, the Mini is a, is a single axle offering from Dutchman RV. It's made to be a small, basic camping trailer, perfect for first-time RVers. This unit comes to the, to the market at a low cost and very well equipped. I'm showing it here with a few goodies that we will go over as I continue with the video. Let's get a little closer take a look. The 2019 Aspen Trail 1700 BH excuse me, has several differences between it and its tandem axle big brothers in the Aspen Trail full line series. One of the big differences is right here at the front is the single propane tank and single LP regulator. The full size models from Aspen Trail will come with dual tanks, and this unit can be upgraded to that. Well, I will say it's not very necessary as a single tank will last, oh, two to three weekends on normal camping use. Very easy to replace, and you can always carry an extra tank if you are going out for long periods. This unit was equipped with a single Group 24 battery that's mounted here on the tongue. And that is provided from our good friends over at Rocky Mountain RV. That is not a factory installed item. And while we're on the topic of Rocky Mountain RV, they are our sponsor. And you can check out this and many other pieces of inventory at RockyMTNRV.com. They do provide all of the inventory that we do here and, and review in our videos. So when it makes sense for you, please support the people that support us. Moving on down the door side here. We have our ample storage access coming in from the outside. Standing up here in the corner, I have an RV starter kit, which is also kind of a necessary item if you're first time RVing. This provides you with a water hose, a sewer hose, uh, an LP, uh, excuse me, a water regulator, as well as some toilet paper to start off with, some black tank charges, and some uh, sanitary gloves. It also gives you the sewer hose, the sewer elbow that is required in the RV campgrounds today, which in Montana we don't use very often, but I still do like to have the elbow anytime I do go into a dump station, makes it a lot easier. We also provide a water regulator, a 115 uh, amp, a park adapter, as well as a surface level. This little kit, when you buy a unit from Rocky Mountain RV, is provided with the unit at no cost. It depends on your dealership whether, they're, whether or not they will provide these items. They do not come factory standard and these are items that are absolutely necessary for the use. So check with your dealer, or better yet, buy from our sponsors that provide it. The 1700 does feature a power awning that runs most of the length of the door side, covers the door, the door side windows, and most of the door side. It's one of the greatest features that they've come up with in the RV industry as it's a simple one-touch button. Anyone can do it. It doesn't require multiple people. That way, if you're out for a four-wheeler ride and your wife is back at the camper, the wind comes up, she can push the button, run the, run the awning right in and prevent any damage. Again, the Aspen Trail sets on a single axle. They run 14-inch radial tires as well as easy lube axles. The one thing I will say about Easy Lube Axles, make sure that you do still take your trailer in at least every other year, if not every year, and have the bearings repacked and inspected and the seals inspected. The problem with Easy Grease Axles are people get a little overzealous with the grease and they'll end up over greasing the thing and ruining the brakes as well as the bearings. So just be careful with that feature. It is very nice that they provide it, but it is something to be, ca to be cautious of. At the back of the unit, we find another difference between this and our big brothers in the Tandem Axle series. The Minis run a single set of rear stabilizer jacks that are very basic. They come down to add stabilization to the coach, take the bounce out of the inside. They're not going to lift the trailer off the ground and cannot be used for leveling. The Tandem Axle Aspen Trails do offer tandem jacks, but again, on both front and rear. But again, this unit is short enough that it's not really required. A single set at the back will service this unit just fine. Underneath the jacks you can see that I have a stack of Lynx levelers. Lynx are just a nice little feature to, to get with your camping trailer. They come in this little carry bag here and stack up just like Legos. 
So you can stack them away and, and use minimal storage in these smaller travel trailers. They can be used underneath the jacks as I'm showing here. You can also add them underneath the tire to level your unit side to side. And they can be used underneath the front tongue jack if you need additional height. It's a great little feature that makes life easier as we go. To the rear of the unit, we'll see we do have a rear bumper, and that is designed for, to hold your sewer hose when you're traveling. The rear bumper also houses the spare tire. The back wall is prepped for the Furion backup camera, which is a nice little feature, and it's an easy plug and play on this type of configuration. Coming around the off door side of the unit here, on the back corner houses our water heater. This runs the Dometic slash Atwood six gallon fast recovery system. This little water heater will produce about 18 gallons of hot water per hour. It's one of the best on the RV market. And again, very small little water heater for a small travel trailer. We keep everything small and light. Down underneath are our sewer connections. Here's our good friend Macy coming back to see us. Down underneath are our sewer connections tucked up nice and tight to the frame. We have good ground clearance on them there. Shouldn't have to worry about tearing that off on a backwoods Montana road. Power cord comes out right here just behind the tire. We have a cable TV connection there on the side which if you've ever camped in Montana you'll know you won't use that very often. And coming up to the front here you'll see our freshwater tank fill which is just your basic gravity fill system. Very classic, very nice little system. Uh, this system, the, the advantage is you can still add uh, portable water to this unit through a jug or, a, or an extra can if you are out for extended stays. Aspen Trail does tint their windows, which gives the, the exterior a very nice look. It also keeps the unit a bit cooler in these hot temperatures. One other thing that I do like is they use the same 2 and 5 16 coupler up here on the front that's used by all their big brothers. They don't go to the two inch coupler like many companies do. While we're right here at the front of the unit, we'll talk about power generation. On these small travel trailers, when you're in the backwoods of Montana, you will, will need to recharge your batteries frequently. And depending on the time of year, depends on how frequent, frequently we talk about. This time of year, right now it's late August, beautiful weather, getting down in the 40s at night, up in the high 70s during the day, you can expect a battery on a unit like this to last two days, three nights at the very most. After that, we're going to have to charge it. As the weather gets cooler, that time will come down drastically. If you like to be out in the fall hunting, fishing, whatever, October, that time of year, when it's cold at night and only warm during the day, you'll need to recharge every day. I'm showing up here on the front the GoPower 130 watt portable solar panel kit that is plugged directly into our Furion solar panel, panel prep here on the front of our Aspen Trail. This system works extremely well if you like solar. The panel is provided with the connector here that plugs into the, to the Furion connection. It comes out, plugs into an extension. We have about 10 feet worth of cord, so you can position the panel to best directly get the sun. And then it plugs into a LED display here on the back of the panel. This also acts as your regulator, so everything you need is built into the panel. The entire system will fold up, very similar to a picnic table, and store right here in this very convenient bag. The things I like about the GoPower system are the bag number one, the ability to point the panel directly at the sun at any given time, and the fact that you can clean this panel at any given time. Panels that are roof mounted, I have found with my experience, people put them up on the roof and they forget about them, never come back. And the problem with that is as soon as you get some dust and dirt, you start losing solar efficiency. I find this to be a very good panel. 130 watt is a larger on the larger side of the panels that they offer in portable systems. But with solar, less is not more. Always get the biggest panel you can afford. 
The problem you have with solar is that the times of year that I was talking about that you need to recharge the worst is the times of year that we have shorter days, cooler nights, and generally plagued with some more cloud cover. And that's where back here at the back comes into play. Back here I'm showing the new offering from Yamaha inverter generators. This is the EF2200IS inverter. This little generator is fairly new to the market and I find it to be a nice match for this size of travel trailer. The things that I like about this generator are the fact that it does have the 30 amp connection that your RV plug plugs directly into. We have a 12 volt charging system as well as 210 volt 15 amp outlets here on the front. We have an output indicator as well as an economy mode. The economy mode will allow the generator to idle up and down to the amount of power required and that is going to save a ton on the fuel consumption. This little generator I would expect to run 12 hours on a tank of fuel when plugged into your unit. Its limitation on this particular RV is the 2200 will not operate the roof mounted air conditioning system. That would require a 3000 watt inverter generator to be able to operate it. This, this generator, the 2200, you can run a twin tech cable from Yamaha and run two of these to operate your AC. My personal opinion is if you want AC, simply go to the 3000 watt. Most of the time in the backwoods, we're going to be taking this little camper into places that have good tree cover or good late afternoon shade. In that case, I would tell you that roof mount air conditioning is probably not necessary in this part of the world. And that's why I like this small generator. It's easier to get around with. It's easier to store. As far as generators go, there are only two brands on the market that I will recommend. Yamaha, which I'm showing here, or Honda and in their inverter series in both series. With the, uh, with the inverters, we provide DC power inverted to AC, and that provides a lot of protection. As it runs through the inverter, it's regulated, so we don't have power spikes. Our new RVs have a lot of printed circuitry inside them, and they do not like voltage variation. And again, that's where the inverter technology comes in and does a great job. Both Honda and Yamaha have a great handle on that technology. I have yet to see anyone else that does it well. Let's step inside our little 1700, take a look at the interior. One other difference here, single entry step on our 1700 BH. The larger Aspen trails will run a, a double step as a general, general rule. You can see that this is a very classic floor plan. It's a great use of the space. It does an extremely good job. This is what we call in the RV industry a Jack and Jill bunk setup, where it has a larger bunk on the bottom, smaller up top. This provides a good large bed for a, an adult at the bottom and, and enough room for a, even a, an adolescent child at the top, and still makes it very easy to get in and out. Back of the camper, we're going to find our little bathroom. And it's a very simple, efficient affair, like most of the camper. Your basic toilet from Dometic, as well as a small shower pan, hot and cold water, of course. A little towel hook there on the back wall. You can notice also that the bunks are both lighted, as well as have a window in each bunk that will provide ventilation. Here on the off door side, you're going to see nice overhead cabinetry stereo system. Down here is our dinette. This unit will make down into a bed by simply lowering the top panel down into the lower, the lower rails here and completing it with the back cushions. Up at the front, we have our queen bed. It's tucked up in the corner again to make it very efficient does a nice job. The front wall has an accent wall, give you kind of a barn wood look, just adds a little color into this little camper. Up on the roof, again, LED lights, one of the best innovations in the RV industry. The LED system has drastically reduced the stress on our batteries, which is always a good thing. Up on the roof, just above me here, is the roof mount air conditioning, like I was talking about. This does require 30 amp shore power, or to be plugged into a generator large enough to handle that that, that model. 
Down the door side, we have our kitchen. The mini series does run a five cubic foot under counter mount Norcold cold refrigerator. This is gas electric. It will work either way. It has a small freezer inside. This unit again is smaller than the Big Brothers, the Aspen Trail, but I find it to be adequate for a unit of this size. It provides enough room for perishable food to go inside, which is the only thing you'll put in a, in a refrigerator anyway. When you're camping in the backwoods of Montana, you're always going to have a cooler with ice and some of your drinks in there and things you don't mind getting wet. So I find the five cubic foot undermount to be ample for this size of trailer. Here again, you can see our single bowl sink, hot and cold water, two burner cooktop, as well as our storage cabinets. Aspen Trail does run an actual plywood box on their drawer, as well as a full extension ball bearing roller guide to provide years of fun out of this little camper. Just past the stove here, before we get to the bathroom, you'll see great pantry space, double doors, they have shelves in there, they're extra deep, and they do put a double travel latch on each one to keep goods in place as we travel down our rough Montana roads. Up above, you can see our High Point microwave. Hanging from the microwave is our MSRP tag. You can see that the unit here that we're standing in happens to MSRP for just under $16,000. Rocky Mountain RV is showing their price at $13,999. However, I do believe they're running some specials on these units currently, so if you're in the market, give them a call over there and see what they're, what they're running on special. We do have an overhead cabinet here, just forward of the microwave, as well as an electrical outlet and TV connection. This unit is not equipped with a TV, however it can be easily added if you wish to. Most people that are using this little camper are going to be in the backwoods where there isn't much for TV anyway. Here on the end of the panel is going to be our control panel, giving us extend, retract for slide out, water pump, exterior light switches, as well as our holding tank uh, indicators there. Of course, the uh, Aspen Trail 1700, this is the thermostat. It is heated with a forced air gas furnace, which is right over here. And that will heat the, the coach very well dur during summer camping conditions. This small of airspace will heat well anyway. <clears throat> run over the specs on the unit here real quickly. And these are straight out of the brochure here from Dutchman. So you're going to see that the 1700 is down here in the mini series right at the bottom. It's the 1700 BH. The overall total length with the tongue and bumper and spare tire is 21 foot 5 inches. It's 96 inches overall width, 8 foot 8 inches tall. The average shipping weight is 3,322 pounds. Dry hitch weight of 452 pounds. And a cargo capacity of 651 pounds. The fresh water tank is 27 gallons. Gray is 28. Black is 28. That gives you good holding capacities for one of these smaller units. Again, the mini-series is designed to be a small, lightweight camper that provides affordable family fun. This unit will sleep five people comfortably. And in my experience, most payment plans on a unit like this will get you down close to $100 a month on a unit in this value. That is an awful lot of family fun for $100 per month. The pluses and minuses on this unit are, again, the low cost, the lightweight. This unit will tow with most, most uh, SUVs and small pickups. And it's just a great way to get your family out away from their cell phones and video games and whatever we find to make things complicated in life now. And get them out in the great outdoors enjoying family and time around a campfire, all the things that enjoy, that make, make the outdoors enjoyable, the things that we enjoyed when we were kids. The negatives on a unit like this are the simple facts that to make it light, they do have to reduce some of the products. Again, they, they put in a smaller refrigerator. They do not add an oven. 
they put one set of stabilizing jacks on the back of the trailer, a single propane tank, a bit smaller fresh water tank. And again, those are all features to save cost as well as weight. But again, when you look at a, at a unit this size, everything that's on the unit is ample. And if there's something that you don't like, it can always be upgraded. The other downside to a unit like this is we find that most first-time RVers are going to buy something in this low-cost, small RV world to see if they like camping. And in my experience, most people enjoy it greatly. And once they do, this unit will be back on trade-in a bit quicker than your average RV. The average turn on an RV is about five years in the U.S. right now. And you'll probably see a, a single axle entry level product like this come back on trade in at more than the two to three years. And that's simply because people have found out that they like camping, but they may need a bit more room or a bigger refrigerator or things that just a bigger trailer will provide. Sometimes they get a bigger tow vehicle and now, now it becomes optional for them. However, like I say, these units are great first time buyers coaches. So most dealers love to get these trailers back on trade in and get the next round of first time buyers out in the field. Thanks very much for watching our video today. The review on the 2019 Aspen Trail 1700 BH. This is a great little offering from Dutchman RV for, for camping, getting out in the, in the backwoods of Montana. So we ask you to enjoy the beautiful weather. If you liked our content, please like, share, and subscribe. And go see our good friends over at Rocky Mountain RV. That's www.rockymtnrv.com. And happy camping.